All right, I wanted to show you this piece in its original state. It's actually an excellent repair. There's only one thing that I had to um, fill in on it. Right over here, see, I already lost it. So there was a spot of missing veneer right here. I filled in and it hasn't been sanded yet. So it's a little rough. And then it just has quite a few Mars in the factory finish that are just gonna, you know, we're gonna make it something pretty. Um, the top I'm stripping because the scrapes in it, I'm trying to get that light. The stuff that was peeling off the factory finish is very thick. So when it chips back, it's really hard to sand down enough without damaging something. When it's all veneer, it had an ink stain on the top as well. And then on the side over here, of course I have it covered up. Um, there's some writing, lots of tape, but the actual overall structural integrity of the piece is nearly perfect. So we're gonna give her a makeover. And I'm pretty sure I'm keeping this one cause I really like it. And I'm just gonna sell the one that I have now. So yeah, I've got stripper on the top. We'll take that off and then um, clean it up and then we can get started on the body. To start with, I'm just taking off the hardware. I'm using a flat scraper here just to help take off the faux keyhole. I don't want to damage the piece, so I'm using that. It's very thin, much nicer than a screwdriver. And then the rest of them just come right off, so that's not an issue. Um, the top, as you can see, did get stripped down, but it has two really dark pieces of wood in it. I tried staining it to make it match. I never got it quite right, so I end up painting it, just in case you're wondering when that happened. So here I'm just applying anaglypto wallpaper. I did it on my last project and I loved it so much. And since I'm keeping this piece, I wanted it on mine. So it's just like any other wallpaper, I'm using um, poly. And then I just kind of line it up, brush it on, make sure you get tons around the edges so that you don't have any lifting. And then it's just kind of a process because this is a large piece. So it takes a minute, take some finagling, and you just gotta make sure that you go back and make sure you get all your bubbles out and that it's a smooth finish. And then also don't be super worried when kind of after you let it sit, bubbles reappear. Just keep checking back and then you'll re-stick them down as you go because it's wet paper essentially. It's, it's gonna bubble up a little bit. So just give it a minute, have a little patience, go back and smooth it out again. And then if you find that you don't have enough poly, you can always add a little bit more poly. It peels up a little and then you can push it back down. But you should have enough that it seeps out the sides when you press down. Not a ton, but it should be seeping out so that way you know you have enough and then you can just wipe it back with a damp cloth and your piece is good to go. You do want to wait till it dries 100% before you paint over it because it'll just have moisture on the back side and then moisture on the front side, which again will cause bubbling. But if you wait for the poly to completely dry, you won't have any issues. So you can use a brayer, but on Anaglypta, I try not to because it's textured and I don't want to squish any of that down. So all I'm doing is taking the whole piece and coating it in Iron Gate. I'm doing all kinds of different brush strokes because I want texture in this. This is gonna be a very texturized piece. Um, texture is a little harder to do it with just the paint with the chalk mountain paint that I use because it is self leveling and it levels so well. I'm using a natural bristle brush and I'm going every which direction and this piece was still so smooth. I could still see a little bit of brush strokes but <laughs> I think um, I probably should have added some sea spray or something into it to give it a little more texture but I actually love the way that it turned out so we're okay we're okay. So yeah just coat on the whole piece. You do have to work it into the wallpaper quite a bit. You can see me doing some swirling motions here. This is going to take the longest just because it's so textured. You have to make sure that you work it in every which direction and then also make sure that when you're painting it you're looking at it from different directions because sometimes you think you're finished and you'll see it from a different angle and you're not. And then this is where the fun part goes. You're going to want a slightly damp rag and you are just going to take all the colors of the paint. This is a slight ombre, not a, not a huge one. It's very gradual. But the very, very bottom is black. And then I fade into lighter grays up into a white, which actually looks like gray at the end. But it's just a very gradual gradient overall on the whole piece. And it's just painting it on. And then I take the rag and kind of wipe it, blot it, 
all kinds of things to get all kinds of texture, all kinds of shapes with it. And I'm just going back and forth with all these colors. And this is a process. So it kind of looks worse before it looks better type situation. So don't be weirded out or worried as you go with your first coat. Your first coat of texture and everything, it, it looks crazy. But you just keep going and keep adding those layers and it will end up looking really, really good. So I did want to add a little bit of blue to this and you can't really see the blue at the end, but it adds like um, kind of a pearlescent tinge to it, if that makes any sense. So it's not like you look at it and you see blue, you just kind of see like, oh, that's interesting. It has like a pearlescent type finish, which is really cool. So you use a ton of water with this technique. My paint is so, so thin, you guys. I just, I made sure it was so thin. And then as I'm wiping it back, if it doesn't come off the way I like, I add more water and more water and more water. And I just blot it till I like the way that it looks. And you'll kind of notice that from the top of the dresser to the bottom, it goes from light to dark. And then also the same thing on each one of the drawers. So it's kind of a gradual gradient overall. And then also each of the drawers is a gradient as well. So yeah, this is sped up, I don't know how many times, but it did, it took me, it took me a couple days to do this because you do want to make sure that your piece is dry as you're doing this stick because you are using so much water, you don't want to reactivate all your paint. So feel free, do some in the morning, maybe do some at night, and then you can do some in the next day. But you don't want to do this back to back. You really want to make sure that your paint is dry as you're doing this because it is so, so wet. Yeah, you can see the paint dripping down the front there. That's that's what we're working with. Really, really wet. And you can see the top is now painted because I just wasn't happy with the stain. Those two boards really messed me up. I wasn't expecting them when I stripped the top off. All right, I've given the complete, the whole piece a complete buff down with some super fine grit sandpaper. I want to say it was like probably 350 or so just to knock anything down because we are doing such a textured look to it. So I've done that. I'm going to start by polying the top um, with my Chalk Mountain Poly. And then the body, I might end up doing wax. So I'm not doing the body. I always start with the top first anyways because it requires the most amount of coats. So we're gonna start with the top and then we're gonna do some fun um, stripes on this top drawer here. So let's get going. Okay, so the smaller bottle of the Chalk Mountain Poly is in a squeeze bottle and I always just squeeze it on my, for my first coat. After that, I don't squeeze it on anymore because sometimes you'll see kind of like a halo of it, but I just, I get a lot of satisfaction about squeezing that on. But I just lay it on pretty thick and then I go back and smooth it out with long brush strokes. And then I'm just making sure that my edges are cleaned up and I don't have any drips. Again, this will be the first of many coats on the top and then I can go back and work on the bottom. And here I'm just making um, a striped pattern. You kind of choose whatever thickness you want and get them on there. And then make sure that you really burnish down your tape really well so that you don't have anything seeping underneath. So here I'm actually using like a mother of pearl type paint and I'm doing the same technique as I was for the entire piece. So it's a blotting with a, this is actually a wet wipe, um, but I just have a teeny, teeny, tiny bit on there and I'm blotting it. It's very, very thin, very watered down. And so it's keeping the texture with the rest of the piece, but still giving like a subtle, subtle glow. Once we take off the tape, you'll, you'll see, it looks incredible, but it's very subtle and very lovely. And then I did this exact same technique with the stripes and everything. I used the exact same tape on both sides of the dresser as well. So none on the wallpaper, but just above it on the little frames, just to make it a little more cohesive. So you can kind of see how reflective it is on just that corner right there where the light's hitting it. Oh, it's so good. And now I'm taking some rub and buff. This is in the gold and I'm hitting all the details with this. So in any of the deeper lines, I go really thick, but everywhere else I just did it pretty subtly. And now we're adding on hardware. 
So this wraps it up. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. I hope you were inspired in some way, maybe. Um, and I hope that you guys will come back next week and subscribe and like and maybe share even. I don't know. Do whatever you're supposed to do when you watch a YouTube video. But it helps me out. So thanks. Have a great week.